Okay. Uh, hello, guys. Welcome. Thank you for joining the, for coming today. Uh, a pretty hard problem that we saw yesterday. It's actually the exact same problem that we saw last week. Uh, it's just a continuation because the uh, Dr. Geary had to take a had to take a little bit more time just to think about it to think about the recurrence relation. But today, I'm going to try my absolute best to go over it. And if you don't know what problem I'm talking about, I am talking about right here, the bitonic traveling salesman problem. So this is the problem that he went over. Let me just make sure you can read that. Yeah, a little bit too close to the edge. There we go, that's a bit better. So that's the problem we're going to be going over. Uh, I'm first going to state the criteria for this, just in case you're, unfam you're unfamiliar with it. So we're given a graph, a couple of nodes. Then I believe this one right here. Let me get my paper because I did work on an example for this. Yeah, let me. So we have a couple of nodes and we want, we want to find the shortest by tonic path. What is that? Well, by tonic means that we want to start all the way to the left, the leftmost node, travel rightwards only until we reach the rightmost node, and then travel leftwards again. So in this case, one solution could be we find the leftmost node, which is this one right here. Make sure you can see that again. You could, perfect, cool. So we find the, less the leftmost node, this one. And uh, just to make this a little bit simpler for you guys, let me give them numbers. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, and this is six. If you're not sure why I numbered it this specific way, is because this is how they appear, it's a little bit too close, if you were to sort them by their x. So the leftmost node is this one, the second mo leftmost node is 2, then the third is 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's how we want to sort this, and this is extremely important, because it's important the way we travel, and since that's important, we want to know which node we want to potentially add to our paths. So let's work this out, uh, at least how we would solve it. This is the leftmost node. From here, we want to travel only right, rightwards. And now we're currently already stuck. We're not sure if we should travel from 1 to 2, from 1 to 3, from 1 to 4, or 1 to 5. We don't know which node should be next. We do this uh, by finding the shortest Euclidean distance. So for each pair of nodes, we find the Euclidean distance between them. And that's how we can determine how far away they are. And that becomes important when choosing our node or choosing our path. Because remember, we want the shortest path. So uh, I, mean, I might give a really unoptimized uh, path right here. But since I want to travel rightwards only in the beginning, I'm going to start at 1, go to 2. Then from 2, go to 5. From 5, go to 6. 6 is the rightmost node. So I know I already did half my work. The other half is from going to 6 all the way back to 1, traveling only leftwards. So what does that mean? Let's say I go from 6 to 3, and then from 3 to 4. 
this is invalid. I cannot do this because when I was a three, to go to four, I traveled rightward. And in this case, I only need to travel leftwards. So, of course, from six, let's go to four, from four, let's go to three, and then from three, let's go to one. And this is one bitonic path. I'm not sure if this, if this is the most optimized one. Uh, certainly looks like it, right? But this is just one of them. You might be thinking, okay, well, we can choose, uh, we can probably do this uh, a greedy way. But like I said, we don't know what's the next node we want to look at. We don't know if from one, we want to go to two. Maybe we might have one here, then two all the way over here, but three here. Uh, what color was I using? Green? Perfect. We don't know. Uh, we can't just say that at one, we let's go to two. Because this distance right here is greater than this distance right here. So why not go from one to three, then from three to two, and then two to one? It will actually give you the exact same path. But it will be more, much more complex. Well, that's actually pretty funny. It will be much more complex if you have multiple nodes. You won't really know which one uh, should be in your top path or bottom path. You, know, you don't know which one you want to choose. So one thing that we that I would like to point out, and that's pretty important for this problem, is that there's two paths here. There's a top path, which could be categorized as one to two, two to five, and then five to six. And then there's a bottom path, one to three, three to four, four to six. At every single time, we want to determine what node we want to add. Do we want to add this current node we're looking at to the top path or the bottom path? And that's one way we can make this just a little bit easier. Uh, and that's how we can introduce dynamic programming into this question. The rows might represent the top path, and then the columns could represent the bottom path. And then, of course, uh, the number of nodes. Let's say we have a DP table called B, where the first index, it's, it's at 2. And the second index, it's at 4. This might represent this. Yeah, this might represent the, the best path if the top path is at, is at 2. Let me just erase these green lines. Perfect. Yeah, let's erase this. So this first one might represent that the top path is only at two. And then the second one might represent at four, which is everything before four. So obviously we cannot go from one to two. Two is already picked by the top path. So the bottom path is going to go from one to three, and then three to four. In our DP table, this can represent this. I'm going to erase this for now. Let's move it more into the middle. Perfect.
label these again by the way we sorted them. This is the leftmost, so that's one. The second leftmost is this one up here, so that's two, three, four. Hit them both. And then I accidentally forgot one, it should be six. Yeah, four is a little bit lower. Four is right here, five is right here, and six is right here. So let me label these again. Four, five, and six. All right, so let me just repeat the problem so you're up to speed. Uh, uh, no, uh, everyone else already, they heard the problem. They, they fully understand it right here. So, uh, sorry guys, I'm just talking to our audience. We have 17 people in the room right now. Just trying to make sure everyone understands. No, yeah, you're the only one here. <laughs> uh, everyone else was scared. Uh, I was scared, <laughs> but I had to be here. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this problem is called the Bitonic Traveling Salesman. We're giving a couple of nodes with X and Y coordinates, and we want to find the shortest Bitonic path. So what is a Bitonic path? A Bitonic path is that you start at the leftmost node, which is zero, from there, you only travel rightwards. So from one, we only travel right. So let's say we go to two. Then we continue traveling right. We go to five. And then we go to six. Once we reach the rightmost node, now we want to travel leftwards. So something uh, that will be invalid was, is from six to three and then three to four. The reason this is invalid is because I've already reached the rightmost node. And exactly, I can only go to the left, but from three to four, I'm going to the right, which is incorrect. So one possible solution is six to four, four to three, three to one. So that is a botanic path, just following that rule. You might be thinking, well, we can use greedy. Uh, the first node, pair it with the, the second node, and then the second, pair it with the, the right node. Uh, in this case, it's three. But as you can already see, we didn't go from two to three. We, re we went from two to five. So you don't know which node you want to go to next, because you don't know which node would give you a, the shortest uh, path, by tonic path. Now, this, this distance, all these green lines, they have a distance. So for each node, we want to get the closest one. And from node one to node two, that's the Euclidean distance. So I believe it's just, this is just the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. I believe that's the math. Exactly, it's just to find the distance between them. Because that, uh, that's part of the problem. Yeah, so that's part of the problem statement. So, uh, and then one thing I said is, if you might have noticed, we actually have two paths here. We have the top path, which is one, two, two, five, five, six. And then we have the bottom path, one, three, three, four, Four, six. This means uh, that we don't really have to go through all of it once. We can actually be doing it, be doing both paths at the same time. And this is how we can use dynamic programming. We can use a DP table where the rows could be the top path, and then the columns could be the bottom path. So for example, uh, if we have B, 2, 5, Yeah, 
exactly. You're given a set of coordinates uh, from the input. Uh, so this, in your DP table, the two might, this two might represent uh, your top half. So let's say you're from one to two. And then the column uh, represents the bottom path. You cannot choose two again, because you cannot revisit nodes. Forgot to say that, but you cannot revisit nodes. Uh, so you go from one to three. So your bottom path will be this. Uh, starting at one, the leftmost node, to two. And then starting at one, your leftmost node, to five. Everything you have not seen. So it's exactly that here, the rows. We know we're at two. We do not know what path. We don't know if it took one, two. But it, we know it stops at two, yeah. It could have taken one, three, two, because it might have uh, considered that with our, which took with the Dynair programming code I'll show later. It might have uh, figured out that one, three, two is a better path. It's a quicker path. And then the other one finishes at five, so it includes everything else, one, four, and five. Wait, can you go over what, what, what's the end of the DP table? Yeah. What is the DP table? The DP table has n rows and n columns. Mm -hmm. Its value uh, is the current length of this path. So the length of this plus length of this, then that, and then that. Oh yes, in this cell, yeah. No, it's it's gonna store the the distance of starting at one, one to two, and then one to three, one three to four, and then four to five. Yeah, if you're saying this is one and this was, this was three and this was five. So yeah, let's do that. Let's say figures out. Let's assume it, it, this was that path. In this cell, in our DP table, this is D1, this is D2, this is D3, this is D4. This cell is going to have the value of D1 plus D2 plus D3 plus D4. So this cell has this, uh, the length of this path. Yeah, so the top path, the length of the top path plus the length of the bottom path. Yeah, so the uh, top path ends at three, bottom path ends at five. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. You cannot do like one, three, four, five, because three is already part of the top half. But as you can see, this might not look to be the right answer. Uh, maybe instead in our DP table, because we want to consider adding nodes, every node to a top path or for the top path and bottom path, we want to consider different type of nodes and we want to find the shortest distance, right? So maybe in that example you showed you, it might not do one, two, and three. It might do one and three, one, two, four, and five. It might do this. So this is the exact same thing, but it might be more optimized. And that's something that we're going to be doing in our DP table. We're going to be optimizing that, fa that value. And for this state, find the minimum. You know, so here, it, it's still three. Uh, just think of it as path one and path two. Don't think of it as top path and bottom path, because they might be flipped sometimes. Yeah, so this is, think of this, now instead of thinking of it as top and bottom, think of it as path one and path two. Path one ends at three. It might have assumed instead of going one, two, and three, it might have, uh, exactly, it might have said this is a little bit shorter, it might be better. And then the same thing for five, this. The combination of these two paths is uh, smaller than the combination of the other path I showed you. So that's the, the main problem. We don't know uh, which combination of paths will work or will give us the minimum number. Also something else I want to point out, when do you know where they would stop? Where this, this thing would stop? Yeah. I think it's uh, when one path ends at six. Like for example, let's say this path ends at six. Uh, we want to stop there and then outside compute this number from three. Actually, no, I think, let me, let me make sure. Yeah, no, yeah, we do. So, so it's, it's going to end here, right? Yeah, J starts at 3 and goes all the way to N. Yes, cool. So it's going to stop here and then outside uh, of the for loop, once we've reached 6, we want to connect the other path. So connect, do this computation, and then connect it, and then you have your value. What, we, what about all the intermediate nodes? Like you're talking about like four and five? Because let's say, let's say five was here. This is now five, this is six, and this is seven, correct? Uh, five must be connected somewhere. It can just not forget about five. It cannot go from four to six. Five must be connected either to the green or to the red. Exactly. By the time one of them reaches seven, we're only missing one connection. Cool. 
Uh, so yeah, you're totally right. Uh, so it's once uh, one of them meets here, that's when we stop it. And as you can tell, let's say red, we did this, and then, then outside, we finish the for loop, outside we compute this value. Is this still by tonic? Exactly, yeah. So this is uh, indeed still uh, by tonic. Because exactly how you said, but I'm just going to repeat it for the live stream. You're still going to the left on the tap in the top path. So sorry, to the right. So right, 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 right. And then you're strictly going to the left after you reach the rightmost node, left, left, and left. And they both uh, start uh, and end at the same node. So now let's state a couple of rules. Okay. Let's say we're going back to our top and bottom path. So our top, our top path is just one and two. Our bottom path, or our second path, is one, three, three, four, and then four and five. Yeah. Okay. So we know our. Let's give. Let's give them variables as well. I'll do it in. Do it here. We know i is at 2, correct? And then j is at 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So i is currently the last node in path 1, j is the last node in path 2. Since i is less than j minus 2, Yeah. Yes. Yes. In the DP table, uh, two, two five. I used to erase this. I'll write the two. Two five. When we get to this point, it's gonna be the most optimal path. Uh, yes. To be the most optimal path from this point. Yes. Okay. So what was the thing? Um, from here. If i is less than j minus 2, then we know that every other point is to be connected to j. If i is less than j minus 2. Yeah. So here j is 5, so 5 minus 2 is 3. That means that all those values, yeah, all those values we know will be connected to J. Oh, or at least uh, four, sorry. Because is it inclusive or exclusive? Let me just double check that. Okay, so here it's it's j minus one. Sorry. So no, it it is it is uh, yeah. So it, it's ex exclusive of, the, of this one. So we know, for example, that four would be added to j. Why do we know that? If, if i is less than j minus 1, 
or, or, or j minus 2 excluding that one. So, okay, this may. Yeah, j minus 1 that way, so you could include that number. So let's just go with j minus 1, sure. J minus 1 with its 4, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um not not exactly. Uh or or let, let me just let me say it and then let me make sure I understood what you were saying correctly. Yeah. To make sure like uh that we're both on the same track here. J minus 1 is going to be equal to 4, correct? Let me bring my live stream back up so I can see myself. All right, cool. J minus 1 is it will be equal to 4. So it's this value right here. And I is at 2. We know that 4 must be connected to J because I cannot go from 2 to 4. So let's make uh, a little bit more sense of this, I guess. So this is the value of j minus 1. We know currently our i is at 2. So there's two, uh, two nodes between i and j, which is 3 and 4, correct? If we know that i is at 2, the only way, uh, we know that 4 must be connected to j because 4 could not be connected to i since i is 2. This might be confusing. Say that again? No, yeah, yeah. Uh, I is this whole path, but it finishes at 2. Okay, so the reason why we can't connect it is because it would have connected from 4, which is equal to the whole other thing. Like the whole already have the whole thing for 3. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. So, actually, no, not exactly, because we could have done 3 to 5. Um, give me a second. Let me try to make this a little bit more concrete. Okay. The funny part is this isn't this isn't even the hard one because there's two there's two rules. And this is the slightly easier one. Okay, so let's let's uh, yeah. Okay, let's 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 work this out. If i is at two and j is at five, we know that four, which is j minus one. No, I, I, yes, I believe they are already connected, yes. Already connected. Yes. So I believe this connection is already s established at this point. So what's the point of this, like? Huh? What's the point of that, like, that one making the J minus 1 uh, smaller than the I? Like, why are we making that point? So we want to make this point, uh, or we want to verify that J minus 1 is part of this path, because okay. in our DP table later on, we're going to say that i I'm using so many colors. I'm never being this creative. It's going to be equal to b of i
j minus 1 plus the distance of j minus 1. Freak. Should have done this in red. Okay. j minus 1, j. Uh, and I was, I was blocking that from the camera. Let me make sure they can see that. They could, perfect. So this is why it matters. This is why we care. Because so we know that to j, uh, we can fully uh, connect this. Yes, yes. That, that, that's only if uh, j minus 1, uh, if i is less than j minus 1. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're trying to figure out. Why is this condition going to be a guarantee? <sighs> if i is here, if it stops at 2, then every other node after that must be part of the other path. I think that's my best explanation of it. Currently. If I, if the line two, yes. Every other node yeah. Must be part of I. So he has minus one in his slide, but should it be minus two? Let me look at the code. Yeah, I believe I worked out some examples. Give me, give me one second right here. This is the exact exact example. And this will be when j is equal to five. Yeah. to j minus 2 from 1 to yeah it's, it is this one so this one uh, uh, is not included yeah I believe we only care about the form because in the code it says I can't read it actually from i is equal to 1 2 j minus 2 if we want to do this work. So if this is j, j minus 2 would be 3. So we start from 1 and go all the way to 3. Actually, no, it, it would include everything else. Because that 3, that means that first we consider this, and then we want to also include this path right here, and then do this logic. Because we have 4 and we can add it. So yeah, I would include the three. It will include the three when, yeah. When we're looking at four, right? When j is at four, so you should know this for now. When j is at four, i is still less than j minus one. So he, yeah. So now here, we know that 4, we can add to 3. But now, when we're at j at 5, 
We don't look at we don't need to look back at three because we can just look at four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we know if we're, at, we're currently at 4, we know that because uh, of that rule, the i is less than j minus 1. We know that 3. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's the first rule. Uh, you know what? Let's call it checks. Uh, I know I'm blocking it. Give me one second. If, uh, there we go. So if i is less than j minus 1, we just want to look back at it. So 4, which 4 already includes the 3, because when j was at 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, and 2 is still less than 3. So we did here that 2, 4 is equal to this, 2, 3, plus the distance from 3 to 4. Yes. Yeah, three and four. But now when we're at five, we only need to look back at four because four already includes the three. Yeah, perfect. So that's, the, that's that first one. Should I erase this? Um, yes, yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's only if in that condition. Then the second one. Crap, I made it worse. Okay. Then the second one is the other. Uh, part of that, it's when when i is equal to, I believe, to j minus 1. Oh, yeah. and the difference between two and J into the first class. Sorry, say that again? The difference between, um, like, remember how we had two and then we had J and then we had J minus one? Mm -hmm. So, it's like, what, what, what is it? What is that? Um, or is that something that you plan on going over? Like, it's an addition of work, then I'll just wait till you get there. If it's reversed, yes. uh, you can think of it as the same way. Let's say now. We connect 3 to 5, right? We can look at 5 as our j now, and then 4 as our i. So we don't really have to okay. worry about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and you, at that point you use uh, the condition. Perfect. Uh, so now let's work out this one. If i is equal to j minus 1, j is at 4, i is at 3. If this is the case, what we want to do, I'm trying to see if I, rem if I remember it, it's, uh, then b of yes yes okay b of i which is the same thing as saying b of j minus one do we agree with that b of i, b of I is the same thing as saying b of j minus uh, j minus one oh yeah the, yeah so in this if statement if this is true then we want to do this work in that case, we can replace i with j minus 1. I'm going to do that to follow his slides, just in case you want to watch his lecture like later on, so you don't see like anything confusing. So instead of saying b of, j, uh, b of i, just do b of j minus 1. And then here, we do j. This is going to equal to the minimum over the range of 1. K, k is greater than or equal to 1, but less than, but less than j oh, j minus, yeah, j minus 1. You're totally right. Uh, Where's my camera? Here it is, cool. Less than j minus 1. We want to consider <coughs> for all of these ranges, should I do a for loop or sh is this fine? You, is this understandable? Okay. Yes, yes. OK, perfect, perfect. Uh, this, the minimum of b of b of k j. Do I need to add distance to this? b, b of Okay, j minus 1, and then d, k, j. Plus distance, that might seem as if we're doing this thing separately. Distance of I'm going to put the K the color black so it stands out. So uh, let me just double check this is correct. Let me take out this QR code as well. OK. K greater than or equal to 1, less than J minus 1. And we want to do the minimum of b k j minus one plus the distance from k to j minus k to j k to j. My bad. Yeah, k. That makes sense. And that minimum is going to set be equal to b j minus one j. Let's make sense of this. If we can make sense of this, then we have everything we need. 
So uh, let's look at this example, right? I, in this case, it is equal to j minus 1. So now we want to choose a k which goes from 1 all the way to 2. Because we do not include the 3. Because it doesn't do equal to. So k in the beginning we 1. OK, what is this? B of k. So this is saying if the first row, the first path, uh, has nothing. It stayed at 1. Yeah. That it, only one node uh, in, in that first path. And then the second path, j minus 1, which is, this is the part that was really annoying to like visualize. Let's do like a second graph right here. Let's call it the exact same thing. Call this one, two, three, four, five, and then six. This looks a little bit too much like six. There we go. If k is here, whoops, that is saying that first path stayed in 1, did not go anywhere. The other path finishes at j minus 1, which is 3. Let's say the most efficient route for that one is 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Do the live stream see that? They do, perfect. So that is this part, plus the distance from k to j. So now we're saying from k, which is where that uh, first path stopped. Exactly, exactly. And this is how we find the most optimal one. We don't really know who we should give this fourth node to. We don't know if we should give it to the first path or the second path. So we're trying all of them. Yeah, I, I, exactly. I think you already see it through. Let me do a couple more iterations for the live stream. But I think you have the general idea there as well. Now k is at 2. So we want to do the minimum. Uh, let's remember that path I just showed you, right? Let's say that had a value of 5, because we want to get the minimum of that or the minimum of the one I'm going to show you right now. Because remember, it's the minimum from this range. So you can think of this as a for loop and getting the minimum of all of those. So let's say k is at 2. Does that part make sense? You want to? You're good? Okay, cool. Let's say now we're at 2. We're doing b of k. So k is part of that first path. And then j minus 1, which is 3. We cannot do 1, 2, 3, because we cannot repeat the same nodes other than the start node and the end node. So we do this now. This is our new uh, two paths. 1 and 2, and then 1 and 3, plus the distance of k to j. k is at 2, j is 4. Now we do this. I think this one has a smaller distance than the other. So b of j minus 1, j, instead of being equal to this, which looks inefficient, trust me, because if there's crossing, there, it's not efficient. Uh, that's what Gary told us. Don't ask me to explain that, please. <laughs> uh, so now this is going to change from this being inefficient to this minimum, which is this, which already looks better. So that's how we can optimize. 
using this for loop when this condition, not this, yeah, this for loop, when this con condition is met. And what we're doing here is we're adding from 1 to j minus 1. Let's add a node to one of the paths. The other path is going to have everything else. And then let's add the distance. Let's see if it's better than what we currently have. There could be this, remember? No, like, I mean, it makes sure before we even run the it, 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 Yeah, it could have something. It has something in it. Give me one second. Yes, it could have something. Yes, it could have something, yes. In fact, it will have something. It will. Exactly. Exactly. We want to build up and we do that by using this. Exactly. So those are the two rules. And this is actually all we really need to solve this problem. Because from this, we can build a recurrence relation. This is one part of a recurrence relation if this condition is met. If this condition is not met, then it's most likely going to hit this one. And I know I erased it, but this one, uh, I can write it. If this is the case, then B yeah. B I J is going to equal to B uh, I J minus one plus distance. of i j if this condition is met then we want to return this uh, recurrence relation because we know the last one is part of that second path so we just want to look at what that last one the value of the last one, and then add the distance. And that's all we really need. I have 10 minutes. Is it OK if I erase this? OK, perfect. Yeah. It, yeah, this, this problem was unique. Let me just say that. So now let's write out the code. You could copy the code that Gary put up in his slide. And you're going to see how they all this ties in together. Uh, yeah, yesterday at 9.30 AM. I'll do it in blue. Let me take a photo of the code so I don't have to repeatedly come back and forth. So remember the first thing is that we wanted to sort it 
uh, sort, sort it on based on the x, on the x value. Uh, that way, the first node is the leftmost, our second node is the second leftmost, and we can number them correctly. Exactly. But we would still take into consideration the y position that we calculated. Yeah, exactly. When we're adding them uh, and we're updating the cell in the DP table, we take into consideration the distance between those two points. So uh, we can add it to that value. So that's the first thing that we need to do in the first part of our code. So let's do sort points. Let's call it that. And then something else that we do want to do is we want to already make a connection. So we have a, if we have a, a, some points right here, we want to make a connection with where i is connected to nothing and then j is connected to this to 2. So if this is 1, this is two, this is three, this is four. We get this ordering from sorting the points. We want to connect J from one to two. We also we have a connection to build off of, build off of, yeah. Uh, and it doesn't give us an error when we're checking if uh, J minus one, for example, it will give us zero. This but is like just some sort of a base case. Pretty much, this is just to make a, a yeah, I guess you can call this a base case. Uh, so it doesn't throw us an error. I don't think it will matter. I think if we run the algorithm, it will fix it. Because two could be really high up from one, and then three could be to the right of two, just by a small bit, but be on the same height as one. So it's better, it might be better to connect one to three instead of one to two, which could be a high node. So let's make that connection B. One, two, is going to be equal to distance of one and two. D here represents the distance. Uh, it's the exact same thing as I had dist, but it's just not D. So now uh, we have node one connected to node two. We need to figure out what to do with node three, the third node, which is why we start a for loop with j equal to 3. Uh, should I write it how he wrote it? Yeah, I'll write it how he wrote it. 2 n. From j is equal to 3, so that third node to n. Let's figure out where we should put it and where that should go. Inside of here, we're going to have another for loop. For i is equal to 1. 2, j minus 2. What we want to do is b of i, j. I know I'm blocking it. Give me one second. Finish this line. j minus 1, j. So do you know what statement this is, or what check we had in the beginning? Yeah, exactly. So this is when i is less than j minus 1. In this case, we're doing it up to j minus 2, uh, which includes that other one, but does not include j minus 1. J minus 1, which, which is fine. It's like uh, that part when we had like the 3 and 4. Uh, 
Uh, the part that kind of confused me is why we have this in a for loop. Uh, that's because, let's say j, let's, write, let's make a graph right here. Or let's make some points. There we go. Well, this is a graph. It's just that the set of edges is zero. It's an empty set. And the set of nodes is not empty. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's say J was here at five. For I is equal to one to J minus two, five minus uh, two is three, so we include that three. For all of these, where uh, j is at 5, yeah. For all of these, when to compute this value of b1j, uh, sorry, let me. Could, to compute this value, we want to look at j minus 1, which is 4. Oh, crap, man, this is. This is in a big for loop, and this could be really confusing. Uh, damn it. Let's do it small. Let's start small. We know j is, is going to be equal to 3, so we're already here. We already made the connection 1 to 2. Three uh, minus 2 is just 1. This will be pretty messy, but whatever. Uh, for i is equal to 1, and then to j minus 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1. Do you think this would, this would run? Yeah, it would run once. It would do exactly that. Uh, J is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. But it would still go to run one, one time. Uh, so what would that do? It would run this. B of 1, 3 is equal to B of 1, 2, which remember, we did up here. It's this connection. Plus, plus the distance of J minus 1, 2, to 3. So now this state has the value of this. Yep, yep. If j was a little bit larger, can I assume, you know what, I think I did this. I believe is this the same one? One, two, three, four. Oh, four is low. Yeah, five is high. Four, five, six. There we go. Four. So when j is at 4, let me, let me find that. Give me a, one second. This is 5. OK, here we go. Perfect. So. When j is at 4, oh, it's con it, it connected? Yeah. 
Yes. And now you're gonna look for uh, all the possible, like the best possible way of connecting all the ways to be the second best part from that will that will sort of make sense with I six connecting A to B to to uh, to six, right? Wait, I I to six how? <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. And it goes and to J minus two, right? Yeah. 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 So the J is what's staying consistent. Yeah. The J is what's staying is what is staying consistent to uh again the I I press the two and then I press the two. So the J is what is staying consistent and then the I is gonna start from one. Yeah. Not until J reaches the end, but until I reaches J minus two. Yeah, but then that cycle will keep going on until J. Until J reaches reaches the end. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if we have the J here, for example, when I is one, we can still compute uh, this value, one five, but you're just looking at the previous J. When I is at two. We can still do that because uh, 5 minus 2 is 3, and i is at 2. So there's still more nodes here could be, that could be directly linked, that we know is directly linked to j. And we want to continue doing that until we can no longer do it. So that's why we have the for loop instead of using if. Yeah, it's just more optimal. So that's that for loop. I know we're running pretty short on time. Second part is phi j minus 1 j is equal to b 1 j minus 1 plus d 1. J. Okay. So this would never reach J minus one. We can agree on that, right? So in that second check that we had to do where we were looking over the Ks, we want to include this path right here, where yeah, we're going to have another for loop in the bottom. So it, it is going to be a total of two nested for loops, which is n squared. Because this is not inside of this. This is outside of it. Yeah, it's outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's outside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is saying if i is at j minus 1, if j was at 5 and i is at 4, then the path of that i and, and j was at, wait, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that is correct. So uh, i is here, right? And then j is there. This state is going to be equal to I being uh, having no path at all, as you can see right there. Yes, exactly. So it's all the way to to j minus one, where I has no path, and then j two, three. And then four plus distance of one to j. That. That is what that is saying. Assume we have no path for one of them, for the first path, and then the second path connect it to this current node we're looking at. After this, we just need to conduct that second check.
which this part I know uh, you're able to, to get. Because uh, you, you walked me through it. Over B. No. This is K. Right. K minus one. Let me sorry, J minus one. Plus the distance. There we go. So this is that check and second check where we find the minimum. And going all the way to j minus 2. Because remember, we did not include that j minus 1. We only had a less than. We only had a less than. And I believe the reason we're doing I believe this could be changed to one. Because I know in the lecture he said that the, the set of all possible values that we can consider for k includes one. So this could be changed to one, I believe, without there being any issues. But his, his slides has two, so that means it would change two. And it was part of the math too, remember? We had min one less than or equal to k, and then k is less than j minus one. Exactly, yeah. So I think we could. This could be changed to one. Other than this, we're pretty much done with this main for loop. I. This will take a long time to like run run through it, uh, but this is why I broke it up. This is our first check, and we confirmed it. This is just. Yeah, it, yeah. This is just that uh, we want to add this, just going straight to the node. And then over here, we're optimizing. For this current state, uh, what's better? What uh, has a, a smaller distance, total distance? Uh, the current state itself, how it is right now? Or, yeah. Or uh, when i stops at k, and then j goes all the way to j minus 1, plus the distance of k to j. Exactly. This is where the optimization is, is happening. Here is just saying, hey, we know this other node needs to be part of this path. That's like the, the part. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We can say this is just the greedy part of it. And then outside of this, like remember, like I said, because this goes all the way to n. So b of n n is equal to b of n minus 1 n plus d n minus 1 n. The j went all the way to n, but the i didn't, which is right here in the i, we go to n. Sorry, in the j, we go to n. And then in the i, we do n minus 1. The final connection. Exactly. Exactly. That's done like outside of the whole thing. Outside of it? Yeah. So this is all together. Yeah, that's all together. And then this is a one for loop. This is by itself. And this is a second for loop. Which is why this algorithm runs in big O of n squared when n is a number of nodes. Because, of course, here we're going to n, and then this could be close to n, 
Uh, so we might as well just call it n squared. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, in the, yeah, uh, I put the, ooh, the YouTube video, for that one's already up, yeah. Wait, what? Oh. oh, okay, okay, yeah, V-judge. Yeah, this problem's in V-judge as well. Okay, yeah, sounds good. But yeah, uh, let me end this off. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and thank you, Demba, for attending. <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys learned something new, and this makes sense now. Uh, yeah, our next lecture is next week. Please don't miss that. And continue doing the daily leak code problems that we're sending out in a server. If you're not part of the server, it's in uh, the description. So just click that and join. Thanks, guys. <laughs>